Coming to you from the Windy City. Welcome to Let's Talk Shop, a podcast about all things cloud and enterprise tech. Listen to insights and guest interviews with IT thought leaders and professionals. Now, here's your host, Elias Kinesar. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Let's Talk Shop. I am still broadcasting from reInvent 2023, and it is my great pleasure to have one of the AWS executives with us today, Nandini Ramani. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Eli. Super excited to be here. Great to have you here. How's the show been so far? It's amazing here today, right? Amazing. The energy day one was fantastic. And this morning, Adam's keynote and all the partnerships, so much excitement. I love so it. So happy to be back here. Yeah, absolutely. This this year has been packed with announcements, so I'm, I'm super excited to talk to you about this. But let's get started with, for our viewers, our listeners, what is it that you are responsible for at AWS? Yes. So I am the vice president of monitoring and observability at okay. AWS, which includes things, you know, our flagship service like CloudWatch, X-Ray, Manage Prometheus, Grafana, et cetera. But I also, like yesterday's innovation talk was on cloud operations, which is broader than that. It's about setup and observing and taking action. So that's sort of what I do. And I've been here two and a half years. It goes by fast. It goes by fast, right? So you are the perfect executive for my type of listeners. There's a lot of cloud out folks out there. So if we were to summarize probably the most important announcements, services, features that, that came out today, that are coming out this week for cloud ops in particular, what, how would you summarize it? What would they be? Yeah. So... Let's, I think I would do it in twofold, right? So when you think about cloud operations, it's primarily about two pillars. One is the setup and governance to okay. ensure that your environment is always compliant and continuously operating with the same um, configurations you set it up with. And the second pillar is how do you observe and take action on all of those? So the three main themes of our launches this year have been one is how do you set up and govern your AWS environment as well as uh, hybrid, as well as multi-cloud environment? Oh, she said multi-cloud. I'm proud of you. <laughs> and the second um, theme was on co cost optimization because we hear this from a lot of our customers that cost op optimization. So uh, continuous governance and compliance, multi-cloud hybrid environments and cost optimizations. So all the launches we did fit into these three themes is what we were talking about yesterday. So tell me a little bit about hybrid and multi-cloud. That's really amazing. What were some of the announcements around hybrid multi -cloud? Yeah, so one that I'm super excited to launch was uh, CloudWatch Logs, um, uh, multi-query capabilities for our CloudWatch Logs metrics. Okay. So what it lets you do is you can have your same dashboards, the same graphs, but you can get data and visualize it from sources such as Amazon Open Search, Azure Monitor, oh, okay. Prometheus, oh. and even your own custom data sources, which could be like Amazon RDS or a file on Amazon S3. So this way what happens is you don't have to switch between multiple tools. You don't need the extra cost of duplicating your metric data. So it, we basically just take the telemetry and visualize it all in CloudWatch under the same metrics. So a single pane of glass, and that will include also, I assume, integrating with some of the on-premises? Yes, on-prem as well, just as easily. Okay. All You can set it up very quickly and easily and start visualizing your metrics in real time. And most importantly, you can also alarm and alert on, across the entire environment. So you can take action and remediate much quickly rather than saying, okay, for my on-prem, I need one set of dashboards, and then I need to stitch it all together. Here you have it all in a single pane of glass. Does that include some, I, I, I saw something around application performance management integration with CloudWatch. Is that part of the announcement as well? Yes, but that that's sort of not in the multi-cloud space, okay. but it's uh, more on the cost optimization side where okay. we have, so we have basically, we've uh, launched these application tags uh, under the umbrella of application operations because a lot of our customers um, look to do manage their costs in their IT management and operations. So what application tags does, today what they do it is they use the tag by resource. Sure. But many companies 
organize their teams by applications. Makes sense. Which, you know. So what we've done is we launched a tag, which is automatically turned on for you for cost allocation per application. Okay. So it le lets you visualize your cost that you're spending, not by individual resource, but by resources by application, which is really valuable for our customers. And actually on this one, I want to also say we have application signals, which is part of our uh, performance management solution, okay. where you can use these signals to control and uh, manage your SLA, SLOs. This is in preview. In fact, it's being announced at the Werner Vogel's keynote on Thursday. And okay. We're super excited. I want everybody to check it out and try. And this is just the first of our foray into, um, you know, doing more and more on the application stack. So what other specific services and features are interesting maybe this week? Anything on Control Tower, for example? Yeah, yeah. So on Control Tower, obviously, it's the easiest way for you to set up your multi-account AWS environment. And you can do it in as little as 30 minutes. What we did this week is we've launched 65 managed AWS controls in Control Tower. Because as more, now more than ever, it's important for you to have control over your digital assets. And uh, what we the term everybody uses these days is digital sovereignty. Right. Um, and so what we've done is in the cloud uh, control tower uh, console, we have a new digital sovereign sovereignty group okay. that you can pull down and you can see all these 65 managed controls. In addition to that, we also have region deny capabilities oh. to keep you your environment even more um, compliant, if you will, and making it much easier for you. So that's one feature. And then going back to cost management, one other feature I really want to call out is CloudWatch Logs in Frequent Access. Okay. This is a new logs class in CloudWatch Logs. It has the same benefits and capabilities such as log ingestion and encryption and cross-account capability, et cetera, as CloudWatch Logs. All of it at 50% lower ingestion price per gigabyte, oh, wow. which is super valuable for the use cases such as like ad hoc querying, or if you want to do after the fact forensic analysis, that this feature is right for you. And of course, you can continue to do use standard logs um, if you're doing like real time log analytics and um, uh, all the other rich capabilities that we offer. CloudWatch has just become so large. You know, I, when I look back at you know 2014, 2015, when when I started getting involved with this. It's still a small monitoring platform. Now it's it's just amazing. Multi-cloud, hybrid, you've got uh, the cost stuff in there, the infrequent access. I mean, this thing has become a full-fledged observability and monitoring tool. And we are only just getting started. <laughs> so I'm going to shift gears on you a little bit, and we can't not touch on probably the hottest topic, the hottest trend in the industry in this conference today, which is Gen AI. I love Q, I'm in love with Q already, <laughs> but I'd love to know how Gen AI is going to be applicable to your area, to cloud ops, to observability, to monitoring, to this entire stack, yeah. shall we say. Yep. So we are also super excited for all the capabilities, including Q that we saw this morning. Uh, so what we are doing on the cloud operations side is we're um, leveraging all these Gen AI capabilities as well as machine learning and AI, and we are our services are now powered with these capabilities. Okay. So we actually have three launches that I'm happy to share. So the first one I want to announce is CloudWatch now has natural language query capabilities. So what it means is you do not have to remember what SQL query to type. You don't have to keep in your head all the query ID, etc. You can ask an open-ended question in natural language, in my case would be English, I would just type it in, Right. Um, no coding required, and it gives you answers. Okay. And this is supported both for uh, logs as well as metrics insights, this querying capability. Nice. And the most important thing, as you heard today in the keynote as well, be because people want to have confidence in the queries that's being generated, it actually gives you a step-by-step -step explanation okay. of the queries that it's doing. That's the first capability. The second one is we also have the same natural language querying capability in AWS Config for the okay. same re reason. 
You can ask open-ended questions. You do not keep, have to keep in mind, you know, PromQL versus SQL versus some homegrown version of SQL. You don't need to learn any of these things. Honestly, now natural language is the programming language in order to get these querying capabilities. And the third one, which is also powered by Gen AI, is an anomaly detection capability in CloudWatch logs. So what, with increasing diversity and volume of data, it's so much harder with a needle in the haystack problem of finding those logs and anomaly patterns in your logs. Because everything is a log, people log everything. And then it's very hard to figure out where those patterns and trends are. So what this capability does for you is you can turn it always on once and it will identify new patterns for you that emerge in your logs. In addition, it'll also tell you if any of your patterns is changed or modified. So these are three, just the early, early stages. Like Andy Jassy, our CEO says, we're three steps into a marathon and I could not agree. And this is what, Eli, makes me so excited to be in this space. Well, so speaking of, you know, we're still early. If you were to look into your crystal ball and tell me from your perspective, what do you think is next? Give us a little bit, you know, a little bit of a taste of what you think is coming. Yeah. So, so I'm a big believer, right? Like, so we've been uh, doing machine learning, artificial intelligence, now generative AI. And honestly, we're moving toward quantum computing okay. and, you know, VR and AR capabilities. You can even see some demos yeah. on the show floor. And so... I genuinely believe cloud operations will be automated. It'll be self-optimizing, self-remediating, self-resolving, so that, you know, when, you, when I said earlier, today you need the query ID in order to be able to query, and now we've launched capabilities where you can ask the question in English. The future is going to be you don't even need to ask the question. State your intent, and it's going to do the... Exactly, and it'll make it... Because honestly... This is undifferentiated heavy lifting for our customers because mm -hmm. they would rather focus on innovation for their end customers, create delightful experiences, but also most importantly, you want to retool your developers, get their skill set, like focus on educating your internal developers and builders and creating the best experiences for your end customers and let us help you with cloud operations there's so much more to come, so watch this space. Very cool. So I'm gonna ask you the, the closing question. Sure. Um, for our viewers, our listeners, if you were to give one advice, to leave them with one advice around cloud ops, around the space, but what would you say? My God, this you speak into my heart <laughs> now. What I find when I talk to customers, cloud operations is an afterthought. I agree. You do not think about it up front. Everybody's like, what do I want to do for my compute? What am I using for storage? What kind of database? And so on and so forth. And it's not until either you get hit with the first issue, you know, or some something, issue, yeah. something yeah. You deploy or something goes wrong. And then you're like, oh my God, where am I what looking? Do I do? Yep. And then, so I always encourage people, like my customers, please think about cloud operations proactively because it can save you time and money and just free you free you up to innovate so that is my one last thought for anybody listening to this podcast. so be proactive get the right training understand the environment be ready for the day two challenge that cloud ops is going to be responsible for yes exactly Nandini, thank you so much for making time i know you're super busy this has been a great reinvent so far thank you for making time and spending this with me and Enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you, and enjoy the conference, and thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure. All right.